absolutism. Mrs May admitted she's worried about the current state of politics and the view that if you assert your view loudly and long enough, you will get your way in the end. Well, someone who knows her well is Conservative peer Baroness Jenkin, who alongside Theresa May co-founded the Women to Win uh, campaign to elect more Conservative women uh, to Parliament. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. And first of all, just a word on her speech. What did you think about what she was saying about the coarsening of political debate and the sort of rancour and bitterness in politics right now? Well, it, it, it's certainly there um, and been increasing. And, of course, a lot of that is about the, the new way of doing things through social media. I think that the last election was a wake-up call for very many people, that there is this kind of brutality, uh, this sort of brutalist attitude, really, to... Uh, all political figures, uh, doesn't matter what your party is, but I think it is particularly directed at women and the, the violence that um, they experience both online and, you know, frankly, in the streets is, I think, a deterrent to more of them coming forward. So I'm very pleased that she has raised this uh, again as an issue and as, as her last uh, as her last big speech. Um, but when I hope that from the back benches this is something that she will continue to work on and I'm very pleased that she is staying in Parliament and that she will continue to champion the issues that she cares so much about even if it's not at the helm of our country. Yeah it's an interesting point you make there Baroness because she singled out the abuse of and bullying of female MPs um, and you and her are trying to increase the number of, of female MP, MPs in Parliament so I mean, how do the two connect? Because obviously, uh, you know, the abuse and the bullying could well dissuade women from coming into politics. Well, I think by seeing more um, and by seeing having more role models out there uh, who are themselves, um, you know, plodding on, uh, playing their role, playing their part. And in fact, I think whatever one thinks of her... Uh, as Prime Minister, people do have, even if it's a grudging respect, uh, at least some admiration for the fact that she has gone on, despite the abuse that she herself has experienced day after day. She's been, you know, she's been doing her stuff. She has got out from under the duvet on days when it must have been quite hard, frankly, to even get up in the morning and let alone to face the House of Commons, which is at the best of times a pretty challenging bear pit. Uh, so I think that she, as a role model, has been... Um, you, you know, a great example of mm. woman who believes in what she believes in and is uh, prepared to stand up and say so. And I very much hope that that will encourage more women to come forward. But I have a feeling that it will be, uh, in a way, once this particular, let's say, stage of our political life is over, that they're going to su suddenly realise they've got to step up. Although there are women, I'm meeting them, you know, daily, who say, well, this is just such a terrible mess, I feel I've got to step up and do my part. Yeah, I mean... But I'm looking, sorry looking to interrupt to you. coming... Yeah, yeah sorry, okay, go on. Sorry to interrupt you, just on this point. I mean, you know her well. Was there a time when she ever, you know, that it really got to her and she felt that she may give up because of the nastiness and the, and the abuse? Uh, well, actually, to be honest, I don't know her well, and there aren't very many people who I think can genuinely say that they know her well. I sat next to an MP who is always uh, um, out there as one of her great friends, and he said to me this week, he said, anybody who says they know her well is not telling the truth. She is quite a hard person to get to know well, and maybe that, if you like, armour is what is uh, of not letting people close to her, is what has actually kept her going over the uh, past three or four years because it, it, she, she doesn't have a large group of friends. She's not a very clubbable, and I mean that in, in a, you know, the kind of male sense, if you like, person. And I think it, she must have felt quite lonely, perhaps, over the, the last period. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting to know her better um, <laughs> when she's out and to having a bit more time to... Um, to, to work together on this very important issue because in the parliamentary party, the Conservative Party in particular, is still over 80% men, uh, an improvement from where we were, but still there's a massive amount to do. And if and without her at the helm, it's going to um, look even, a, you know, it's going to look the male yeah. party that it is. OK, just a quick word on legacy. I mean, she will be known as the Prime Minister who failed to deliver Brexit, won't she? I'm, I'm afraid that will be part of it. 
Uh, I think she will probably be feeling the same disappointment that a lot of us feel, that she was unable to deliver on the initial message that she had uh, when she arrived at Downing Street about the burning injustices. But I think that she will take a very active and participatory role. We've got some, we've got some of her key legislation coming, the domestic uh, uh, abuse bill, and I'm sure she will be participating in that. I very much hope she will be driving it. And I, I'm sure that from the back benches, and, and you know, I, I'm relieved that she's not going to be, at least I hope she's not going to be packing it in and rushing off to, you know, make gaz, gaz, gazquillions of money for, uh, somewhere else. I, I know that she will be, you know, at the very beginning of this process, I said she was diligent and hardworking and nobody would say that that's not been the case. But of course she will be bitterly disappointed yeah, yeah. that she has been unable to achieve this. And just a final point. I mean, she talked about those burning injustices you know, two of them were poverty and mental health. And to be honest, neither has really improved in the three years she was Prime Minister. Well, I, I think some might argue about the, um, about the stats on some of those things. But, um, no, but I'm... I mean, there are more people in work than ever before. There are some good... You know, there's some really good indices that we, we need to have a look at as well. Uh, of, of course... There is always more to do on these issues. And I know that um, once we've got this Brexit situation out of the way, there yeah. are ma many, many MPs who are longing to get back to the domestic issues, which uh, we really so badly but, need but to But half do. a million more children in relative poverty, um, mental health, number of mental health beds, you know, continue to fall, mental health nurses, numbers falling. This is, the, you know, not the so much of a burning injustice then if she hasn't dealt with that. They, they, they will be dealt with. It's just the bandwidth of government has been so bogged down with this horrible treacle that we are ploughing through as a country and which mm. is so depressing so yeah. many people that um, I, I know that there is a, 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 there's a big cohort of MPs who are determined to deal with these issues as soon as we've actually um, settled the, the Brexit yeah. issue. But okay. There will be a whole new agenda. OK. Baroness, thank you for joining us. Appreciate your time.